We worship this evening according to the communion liturgy on page 15 in its entirety. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins to God our Father asking him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Holy and merciful Father, I confess that I am by nature sinful and that I have disobeyed you in my thoughts, words, and actions. I have done what is evil and failed to do what is good. For this I deserve your punishment both now and in eternity. But I am truly sorry for my sins, and trusting in my Savior, Jesus Christ, I pray, Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner.
God, our Heavenly Father, has been merciful to us and has given His only Son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Therefore, as a called servant of Christ and by His authority, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. In the peace of forgiveness, let us praise the Lord. be with you. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, in the sacrament of Holy Communion, you give us your true body and blood as a remembrance of your suffering and death on the cross. Grant us so firmly to believe your words and promise <clears throat> that we may always partake of this sacrament to our eternal good. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The congregation will please remain standing for the reading of the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel of the Passion History of our Lord Jesus Christ is written in the 23rd chapter according to St. Luke, beginning at the 26th verse. As they led him away, they seized Simon from Cyrene, who was on his way in from the country, and put the cross on him, and made him carry it behind Jesus. A large number of people followed him, including women who mourned and wailed for him. Jesus turned and said to them, Daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me. Weep for yourselves and for your children. For the time will come when you will say, Blessed are the barren women, the wombs that never bore, and the breasts that never nursed. Then they will say, To the mountains fall on us, and to the hills cover us. For if men do these things when the tree is green, what will happen when it is dry? Two other men, both criminals, were also led out with him to be executed. When they came to the place called the Skull, there they crucified him, along with the criminals, one on his right, the other on his left. Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. They divided up his clothes by casting lots. The people stood watching, and the rulers even sneered at him. They said, He saved others. Let him save himself, if he is the Christ of God, the Chosen One. The soldiers also came up and mocked him. They offered him wine vinegar and said, If you are the King of the Jews, save yourself. There was a written notice above him which read, 
This is the king of the Jews. One of the criminals who hung there hurled insults at him. Aren't you the Christ? Save yourself and us. The other criminal rebuked him. Don't you fear God, he said, since you are under the same sentence. We are punished justly, for we are getting what our deeds deserve. But this man has done nothing wrong. And he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus answered him, I tell you the truth, today you will be with me in paradise. This is the gospel of the Lord. Let us join in confessing our faith according to the words of the Nicene Creed on page 18 in the front of the hymnal. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became fully human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who in unity with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. Our text on this Maundy Thursday from the 23rd chapter according to St. Luke. When they came to the place called the skull, there they crucified him. Were you there when they crucified my Lord? Asked the old hymn. Simon of Cyrene was there. The weeping women of Jerusalem were there. Both Jews and Gentiles were there. Two convicted criminals were there. Were you there? Sometimes people poke fun at the question. Of course you were not there. Of course I was not there. We weren't even born yet. Were you there? Oh yes. You were there. I was there. All the sins of the world were there. And everything that you and I have been, we were there. It was there that the Lord laid on him the iniquity of us all. Every soul from Adam until Judgment Day was there. And you and I, we were there. Not everybody received the same personal benefit from it. Simon of Cyrene was there. As they led him away, they see Simon from Cyrene who was on his way in from the country and put the cross on him and made him carry it behind Jesus. All it took was a tap on the shoulder with the flat of a Roman spear to press a man into service. Weary from the lack of sleep, the incessant beatings and the scourging and the abuse, Jesus is now too weak to carry his cross out to the place of crucifixion. And so Simon of Cyrene is handy. Here he is, perhaps scraped and saved his whole life. This believing man from this faraway continent of Africa who longed for the coming of the Christ. He comes to Jerusalem to celebrate the Passover. And now this has to happen. He becomes part of this dead man walking scene. Something rather strange, macabre. How could this even happen? But then sometimes chance encounters result in incredible things. The Gospel of Mark tells us that Simon of Cyrene was the father of Alexander and Rufus. Now, you say, so what? Well, the Gospel of Mark was written to the big empire builders of Rome. It doesn't seem likely that Mark would mention that this Simon of Cyrene had two boys named Alexander and Rufus, unless it would be recognized, perhaps, by someone in Rome. Sure enough, years later, when the Apostle Paul writes his letter to the Romans, and in the last chapter he's sending all kinds of greetings to different folks in the church at Rome, and he says, greet Rufus, beloved in the Lord. <sighs> in other words... This son of Simon who carried Christ's cross may have been one of the founding members of the church in Rome. And you say, well, what about Simon himself? In the 13th chapter of Acts, among those in the church at Antioch who sent Paul off on the first missionary journey is a man named Simon called Niger, the black one, as in from Africa. Coincidence? 
Maybe not. It was this so-called chance encounter with Christ that Simon from Cyrene has. And how would he know at the time that out of the clear blue here on the road, he would end up carrying the cross of this man he did not yet know, who was the real Passover Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Chance encounters, but directed by God. So that later could it be that this man becomes one who sent Paul off to preach the gospel to the Gentiles and that indirectly as the gospel went forth to the Gentile world, you and I have the gospel and came to believe it because of this man from the dark continent who came to believe in Christ. Chance encounters. Someone carried you and me up the aisle at some point to be baptized. Or at some point in our lives when we did not know Christ, they told us about Christ. Chance encounters. In strange ways, you and I meet up with Christ. And it would be a mistake to miss the most important train stop of your life and mine by not recognizing that these are not chance encounters at all, but that they are divinely designed and that God had you in mind all along that you should come to know Christ. So Simon of Cyrene was there. The weeping women of Jerusalem were there. It says a large number of people followed him, including women who mourned and wailed for him. Jesus turned and said to them, Daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me. Weep for yourselves and for your children. For the time will come when you will say, Blessed are the barren women, the wombs that never bore, and the breasts that never nursed. Then they will say to the mountains, Fall on us, and to the hills, Cover us. For if men do these things when the tree is green, what will happen when it is dry? These spectators along the roadside, these women who weep, whom Jesus calls the daughters of Jerusalem. These are not the women who faithfully followed Jesus during his ministry and who faithfully stood at the foot of the cross as he, lay di as he was dying. No, God bless those dear women. These are the women of Jerusalem, the Jerusalem over which Christ wept because they would not, and now their womanly sympathies are going out to Jesus because he is being treated roughly by these rude soldiers of the Roman governor and so the tears begin to flow but these tears are off base they are tears of mere sentiment for bad things happening to the sweet and gentle Jesus we still think this way sometimes. You know, you get the Lenten season and whip up a few emotions and shed a few tears over the poor Jesus who had all those bad things done to him. But this is mere sentiment. It is not the godly sorrow which works repentance of which St. Paul spoke. It is easy to whip up our emotions and people might say, well, this is really kind of therapeutic. It's kind of a good thing, you know. So we scream like a terrorist at a football game or we cry over a sweet sentimental movie. And once a year, people will coo over the cute baby in the manger, shed a tear at the cross, smile at happy endings on Easter morning. And then... Move on. The sentiment. Surely what happened to Christ affects our will, our intellect, our emotions deeply. But real repentance is not all of that. Real repentance is twofold. It's what the Lutheran confessions call terrors of conscience smiting the soul over the knowledge of sin. 
what you and I experience when we look into the mirror of God's law and see things the way they really are. And it is looking to Christ Jesus who lived and died and rose again for us to redeem us and give us a place at God's right hand. This these women do not get. This many people to this day do not get. And so the women weep. Jesus stops the whole parade. He is God. Roman soldiers do not argue with him. He goes totally in control of every moment here. As he stops the parade, he says to the women, weep not for me, weep for yourselves and for your children, for the time will come. He will say, mountains fall on us and hills cover us. Now, surely that was partially fulfilled during that horrific thing that happened some 40 years later when the Romans surrounded the city of Jerusalem, reduced it to cannibalism within its walls. The Romans utterly destroyed Jerusalem, left not one stone upon another, but it was in token of a far greater judgment to come when Voices will shout out, as it says in the book of Revelation, borrowing these very words, mountains fall on us, hills cover us and hide us from him that sitteth upon the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb. In those days, men will seek death and will not find it. They will desire to die. Death will flee from them. Why? Why? Because if men do these things in a green tree, says Jesus, what will happen in the dry? You say, what a strange phrase. A green tree. A green tree is fruitful, it's green, it's fresh, it's not meant for the fire, it's not intended for the fire, and yet the wrath of God is heaped out upon the green tree, upon the Christ. And if this is what happens in order to redeem us, then what shall happen to the dry tree, to the chaff, to the dead one? who have rejected Christ when he came to redeem them and who want no part of them. The weeping women of Jerusalem were there. Both Jews and Gentiles were there that day. Two other men, both criminals, were also led out with him to be executed. When they came to the place called the Skull, there they crucified him along with the criminals, one on his right, the other on his left. Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. And they divided up his clothes by casting lots. The people stood watch, and the rulers even sneered at him. They said he saved others. He can't save himself if he is the Christ of God, the chosen one. The soldiers also came up and mocked him. They offered him wine vinegar and said, If you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. There was a written notice above him which read, This is the king of the Jews. Both Jews and Gentiles were there that day and no sooner is he hoisted to the cross than he prays for all of them, pleading the merits of his cross for all of them, Jew, Gentile alike. How many personally came to lay hold upon that forgiveness which he won for them? Some, not all, but here upon the cross, Jesus must listen to the mockery of those who say, he saved others, let him save himself. If he is the Christ of God, they said more than they knew. The beating heart of the Christian faith is that Jesus Christ did not save himself so that you and I might be saved. Jew and Gentile were both there so that, as St. Paul said later, so that the whole world might be held accountable to God and that the whole world might also be redeemed. Two convicted criminals were there that day. One of the criminals who hung there hurled insults at him. Aren't you the Christ? Save yourself and us. But the other criminal rebuked him. Don't you fear God, he said, since you are under the same sentence? We are punished justly, for we are getting what our deeds deserve. But this man has done nothing wrong. And he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus answered him, I tell you the truth, today you will be with me 
in paradise. Almost as though to sober us a bit, we are told first of the convicted criminal who did not repent, who cursed Christ. And it is, I suppose, a great warning. Actor Jack Nicholson, in an interview some years back, talked about all the drug and booze parties he and Marlon Brando used to have, and all the women he had and still has. And then he commented that the closest thing he ever had, even close to a religious thought, was that he should live in the now in the present moment. In other words, the guy really has no interest in heaven and no fear of hell. William Ernest Henley, the British writer of that poem, Invictus, you know, it matters not how straight the gate, how charged with punishments the scroll, I am the master of my fate, I am the captain of my soul. But he found out he didn't really hold the reins of his own life in his hands. It didn't work to make himself the god of his own life. As Henley sat helplessly by to watch his young daughter die and then himself entered an early grave. The brilliant professor Nietzsche more than a century ago thrilled his German university students by telling them God is dead, man is Übermensch, Superman. But his admirers today don't tell you that the good professor spent the last long 11 years of his life in an insane asylum. There is this wonderful comfort in this word of Christ about paradise to the dying thief. Because it does remind us if we have loved ones, friends, who have forsaken Christ, who have placed their fist in God's face, that while there's life, there's hope, even at the very end, Christ is there. But it is a truth much misused, isn't it? If a man says to himself, you know what, I can wait. I can wait until maybe I'm old and weak and don't have much else to do and maybe I'll start attending services or reading the Bible. Or maybe once I'm in the nursing home, the preacher can show up and maybe he can straighten all this business out for me. And then maybe even to put a little piety on the whole thing, might say something like, oh, after all, remember the dying thief? That's right. Remember the dying thief. There were two of them. There were two of them. The church father Augustine once said that God gave us this one example of a last minute conversion that we might never despair. Well, there's life, there's hope. But only this one example that we might never presume. People who make an appointment to meet God at a later date may discover that he does not show up. Now is the day of salvation. And so, the one thief who repents, turns to the other, rebukes him, and turns with longing eyes toward Jesus. Remember me. When you come into your kingdom, in Christ's promise, I tell you the truth today, you will be with me in paradise. What a Beautiful thing to you and me. A beautiful promise.
repentant souls who just want to get to heaven. That Jesus will say to you and me, I won't forget you. See? I have engraved you on the palms of my hands. I won't forget you. This promise he makes, this pledge to you, he who comes to me I shall in no wise cast out. Were you there that day when they crucified my Lord? Simon of Cyrene was there. Weeping women of Jerusalem were there. Jews and Gentiles, they were all there. Two convicted criminals were there. Were you there? Oh, yes. You were there and I was there because our sins pounded in the nails and added to the infinite burden that he bore that day. You and I were there too when the Father looked down and accepted the substitution, the sacrifice, of his only begotten Son, whom he gave at the cost of his own broken heart, as the Father cradles in his arms his dead Son and awaits the first sunbeams of the third day. Were you there? You were there. I was there. Now what? Today. Tomorrow. Next year. Forever. Amen. The peace of God which surpasses all understanding so keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Amen.
We are pleased to report this evening that Mr. Eric Duve of St. John's Caledonia has officially accepted our call to be a teacher in our school. Let us pray. Lord of the Church, we thank you for answering our prayers by leading Mr. Duve to accept our call to teach in our school. We pray that you would grant him the wisdom to use faithfully the gifts you have given him to fulfill his teaching ministry among us. Help us honor and respect him as your gift to our congregation. Enable us to work together with him and all our called workers in a spirit of harmony and love, that your kingdom may flourish among us and come also to the hearts of others, to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Let us also offer up our prayers for Leland Kastenschmidt, who is hospitalized at St. Mary's in Rochester, and for Bonnie Miller, who is hospitalized at Gunderson in La Crosse. O Lord, you are the great physician of soul and body. You chasten and you heal. We pray that you would look with mercy on your servants and restore their strength. You gave your Son to bear our infirmities and sicknesses. Deal compassionately with your servants and bless the medical means employed on their behalf with your healing power. We commit them to your gracious mercy and protection, for you are a faithful and merciful God for Jesus' sake. Amen. And also let us offer up a prayer of thanksgiving uh, for Mandy Holtzhausen, the wife of Schuyler Holtzhausen, whom the Lord hath blessed with the gift of a baby girl. Blessed art thou, O God, that thou hast graciously sustained this mother in her peril and pain, and gladdened her heart with the gift of a child. We pray thee, keep both mother and child in thy protection. Give them strength and health, and avert whatever might prove hurtful to them in body or soul. And as thou wilt be pleased to receive the child into the kingdom of thy grace by the washing of holy baptism, Grant unto her thy continual blessing through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We continue with the communion portion of the liturgy, beginning on page 21 in the front of the hymnal. Page 21. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good and right that we should at all times and in all places give you thanks, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord who brought the gift of salvation to all people by his death on the tree of the cross, so that the devil who overcame us by a tree would in turn by a tree be overcome. Therefore, with all the saints on earth and hosts of heaven, we praise your holy name and join their glorious song. Jesus Christ on the night he was betrayed took bread and when he had given thanks he broke it and gave it to his disciples saying take and eat this is my body which is given for you do this in remembrance of me 
Then he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Eat, this is the true body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, given into death for all your sins. Take, eat, this is the true body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, given into death for all your sins. Take, drink, this is the true blood our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ shed for the remission of all your sins. Take drink. This is the true blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ shed for the remission of all your sins. May this true body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Strengthen and preserve you in the true faith unto life everlasting. Depart in peace. Amen. of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ shed for the remission of all your sins take drink this is the true blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ shed for the remission of all your sins take drink May this true body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus strengthen and preserve you in the true faith unto life everlasting. Depart in peace. Amen. eat. This is the true body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, given into death for all your sins. Take, eat. This is the true body of 
our Lord and Savior. Take, drink. This is the true blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, shed for the remission of all your sins. Take, drink. This is the true blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, shed for the remission of all your sins. May this true body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus strengthen and preserve you in the true faith unto life everlasting. Depart in peace. Amen. Savior Jesus Christ, given into death for all your sins, take, eat. This is the true body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Take, drink. This is the true blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ shed for the remission of all your sins. Take, drink. This is the true blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, shed for the remission of all your sins. May this true body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus, strengthen and preserve you in the true faith unto life everlasting. Depart in peace. Amen. Take, eat, this is the true body of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, given into death for all your sins. Take, eat, this is the true body of our Lord and Savior. Take, drink, this is the true blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, shed for the remission of all your sins. Take, drink. This is the true blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. May this true body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus strengthen and preserve you in the true faith unto life everlasting. Depart in peace. Amen. Take, eat, this is the true body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, given into death for all your sins. Take, eat, this is the true body of our Lord and Savior. Take, drink, this is the true blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, Shed for the remission of 
of all your sins. Take, drink. This is the true blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, shed for the remission of all your sins. May this true body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus, strengthen and preserve you in the true faith unto life everlasting. Depart in peace. Amen. Savior Jesus Christ, given into death for all your sins, take eat. This is the true body of our Lord and Savior. Take drink. This is the true blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ shed for the remission of all your sins. Take drink. This is the true blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. May this true body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus strengthen and preserve you in the true faith unto life everlasting. Depart in peace. Amen. Take, eat. This is the true body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, given into death for all your sins. Take, eat. This is the true body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Take, drink. This is the true blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, shed for the remission of all your sins. Take drink. This is the true blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, shed for the remission of all your sins. May this true body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Strengthen and preserve you in the true faith unto life everlasting. Depart in peace. Amen. Take, eat. This is the true body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, given into death for all your sins. Take, eat. This is the true body of our Lord and Savior. Take, drink. This is the true blood our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ shed for the remission of all your sins take drink this is the true blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ in this true body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus strengthen and preserve you in the true faith and do life everlasting depart in peace amen Eat. 
This is the true body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, given into death for all your sins. Take drink. This is the true blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, shed for the remission of all your sins. May this true body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus strengthen and preserve you in the true faith unto life everlasting. Depart in peace. Amen. This is the true body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, given into death for all your sins. Take drink. This is the true blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, shed for the remission of all your sins. May this true body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus strengthen and preserve you in the true faith unto life everlasting. Depart in peace. Amen. Let us continue on page 24 in the front of the hymnal with the Song of Simeon. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. O oh God the Father, source of all goodness, in your loving kindness you sent your Son to share our humanity. We thank you that through him you have given us pardon and peace in this sacrament. We also pray that you will not forsake us, but will rule our hearts and minds by your Holy Spirit so that we willingly serve you day after day, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. 
The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Thank you. 